In the next few lectures, I will derive the full equations of motion, including the uh, stress tensor for a fluid. So we will put the derivation of full equations of motion for a fluid. We will do this using three different approaches just to cover as many um, possibilities as possible. The result will be the same, but the different interpretations are always interesting and I think they're really valuable for you to understand. The first approach, we will use the Reynolds transport theorem using RTT. We'll take the integral form, um, write, it, write all the integrals as volume integrals, and then make our um, usual assumption that the volume is arbitrary so we take the integrands out and then we get the differential form and then method two we're going to be using a using a shell balance with a force interpretation with a mechanics or force interpretation interpretation of the stress tensor okay and three using a shell balance with a diffusion momentum diffusion with a diffusion interpretation interpretation of tau now recall the integral form of the um, governing equations that we obtained from the Reynolds transport theorem was integral over control volume of partial rho u by partial t dv plus integral over the control volume of div u rho u dv equal minus integral over control volume of grad p dv plus integral over the control surface of n dot tau ds plus integral over the control volume of rho g dv. Note a couple of things um, that I went ahead and did, uh, did here. And the first one is how I wrote the convective term rather than div rho u u, I wrote it as div u rho u. If you look back at my previous lecture on tensors, um, this enforces the idea, this way of writing it enforces the idea that the velocity field u is transporting momentum by advection. Um, so if you write it in this form, I, this is preferable in my opinion, although in the end the, the, the quantities are are um, symmetric so uh, u rho v is equal to v rho u right but if you think of momentum as its own quantity this is a more um, rigorous approach in my opinion the other change i made was for um, this integral of the surface forces remember this is summing up all the surface forces on the control volume okay it's integral over the surface over the control surface and I switched the dot product um, in the past or you may have seen it and in the past I wrote it as tau dot n. I'll explain a little bit later why this is in a, a better way of writing it because it clarifies, um, we will see how it clarifies the direction of um, um, the intended force. So, uh, you know, if you're dotting with, um, uh, with the uh, uh, I direction, uh, so for example, a phase pointing in an X phase with a outward normal in the X direction. So you want to get all the forces that act on the control volume in the X direction, then um, this would be 100, zero, zero, and then dotting it with the stress tensor the way we've been writing it, um, this will produce only the terms that are in the X direction. Okay, I'll, I'll discuss this a little bit. Um, so the stress tensor. We said it's a, uh, it's a state uh, of forces, describes the state of forces on a, on a fluid uh, at a point, on a fluid element in this case. And so tau, we write it as tau ij 
and we wrote this as tau xx, tau xy, and tau xz, and then tau yx, tau yy, tau yz, tau zx, tau zy, and tau zz. And we said that this is the, the first index, the first number describes the phase. So this is the stress or the force per unit area acting on an I phase in the J direction, J direction. Okay. And what's an X phase? It's a phase perpendicular to the X axis. What's a Y phase? It's a phase perpendicular to Y axis, to the Y axis. What's a Z phase? It's a phase perpendicular to the Z axis. So if we write our coordinate system like this, x, y, and z, and you have your usual um, element, okay. okay, so this would be an x phase, also the other, on the other side, but this would be an x phase, this would be a y phase, and this would be a z phase, so for example, tau xx would be this little guy over here. This is tau xx. What is tau xy? It's the stress acting on an x face in the y direction. So this is an x face in the y direction. So this would be tau xy. Now what about tau yx? It's the stress acting on a y face. So this is a y face in the x direction. So this would be tau yx tau yy acting on a y face in the y direction, okay? Now, there are also stresses acting on the other faces. As we bring, as we shrink the element to zero, that is gonna give us um, um, the divergence of this stress sensor, but we need to designate a notation and um, a, a sign convention for the stresses. And we say a stress is positive if it is acting uh, on a face where the unit normal is in the positive coordinate direction. So the stress will be positive in that coordinate direction. So on this phase, for example, tau xx, the unit normal is i. So it's acting in the, um, it's acting in the plus x direction. So if the stress will be positive, we, we define the stress as being positive if it's acting in the plus x direction. But on this other phase, the unit normal is i is minus 1, 0, 0. So this essentially determines the positive direction. And on this phase, this would be tau xx, um, the positive tau xx. Okay? And same thing here. So tau xy is acting on a, f on a phase. So the positive coordinate direction on the, x pl on the plus x phase, uh, the positive direction is x, y, and z. So therefore tau xy points in the positive y direction. And same thing over here, since this minus x phase points in the negative x direction. So ev all the negative directions will determine the positive direction of the stress. So therefore, uh, on this phase, tau xy would be po a positive tau xy would be pointing um, downwards.